This video is about market failure and probably the most significant cause of market failure, which are externalities that occur in production and consumption. So first up, we need to be really clear on what market failure actually is. And to understand that, we actually need to go right the way back to our basic supply and demand analysis. So you can see our supply and demand diagram here with the upward sloping supply curve and downward sloping demand curve and the equilibrium being at the point where supply is equal to demand. And the market mechanism and the workings of that market, market mechanism would state that that equilibrium point is going to provide us with an efficient allocation of resources because it's the point where supply is equal to demand and so the market there is clearing. Now market failure happens when that price mechanism or that market mechanism fails to achieve that efficient allocation of resources that we might expect it to from that basic supply and demand analysis. Well, Why might that be the case? In order to really understand that, we need to start to understand the difference between private and external costs and benefits. So private costs and benefits are those that are incurred by the individual or firm involved in an economic transaction. So when these suppliers that make up this supply curve are determining how much output they're supplying to the market, they are going to be considering only their private costs, the cost to them as suppliers in producing that output. And when these consumers in this market are making their decision as to their, how much they're going to consume and the amount of output which they're going to demand, they're going to be making that decision based on their private benefits. So the benefit that it's going to give them individually for consuming that good. And that really is how we're constructing those supply and demand curves. But this is where the slight complication comes in, where we've got these external costs and external benefits. And so these are costs and benefits that are incurred by third parties not involved in the economic transaction. So when the suppliers are making their decision in terms of how much to produce, they are not interested in the external costs. When the consumers are making their decision in terms of how much to consume, they're not interested in the external benefits. They're only interested in the private ones. And putting those together, we get the social cost as the summation of the private cost plus the external cost. And we get the social benefit as the summation of the private benefit and the external benefit. And so you might be thinking, well, what has this got to do then? All these private costs, external costs, social costs, private benefits, external benefits, social benefits. What's that got to do with market failure? Well, the market failure happens, as I mentioned before, because the producers and the consumers are only taking into account their private costs and the private benefits during those economic transactions. And that means you're going to find there's going to be a divergence between those private costs and the private benefits and the full social costs or social benefits, which in a perfect world, in a socially optimal world, we would want those full social costs and full social benefits to be taken into consideration. So those external costs and external benefits get ignored. And that's the start of the story to why we get this market failure. So getting a little bit more specific now in terms of what's causing these market failures, we talk about negative externalities as being adverse consequences that are imposed on third parties as a result of an economic transaction. And by third parties, we, need, we mean people who are not involved in that economic transaction at all, but are having that impact imposed on them and a feeling and effect of that economic transaction, even though they've got nothing to do with it. So some examples of that might be alcohol consumption. When people drink too much alcohol, it causes a strain on the NHS and on the health system. And so you could say there that the NHS is a third party that is being adversely affected by people's excessive alcohol consumption. And then you could take that further as well and you could talk about um, 
everyone really in society who is then funding the NHS through their taxes is being negatively affected because it's they're finding more of their tax um, income being put towards supporting the NHS and having to treat those sorts of issues. We've also got pollution from factories. So when um, firms are making their decision in terms of how much output to produce, um, they're not considering the third parties, the people in communities, in surrounding areas who are going to be negatively affected by the air pollution caused as a result of their output. So the people in those communities, we could term as being the third parties in that case. You've also got positive externalities, and so they are the beneficial consequences that are gained by third parties as a result of an economic transaction. So, for example, beekeeping. And when people keep bees and they produce honey um, by keeping those bees, then uh, they're, they're considering the benefits that it's going to give to them, and they're considering the benefits in terms of selling that honey and in terms of keeping those bees but they're not necessarily considering the benefits that it's going to have for third parties, such as the environmental impact, the fact that those bees are going to go and pollinate flowers in other areas, and that has a really positive impact on the environment and then on people living in the surrounding area as well. Christmas lights. Uh, you might have uh, make it, someone making a decision as to whether to purchase and put up Christmas lights on their house. Well, they get the benefit of that. But actually, in some ways, even bigger benefit is given to people in the surrounding street that can then look at those lights from the outside and they get a bit of a benefit from that. They weren't involved in the decision to buy those Christmas lights. They weren't involved in the decision to put them up, but they're getting the benefit from that person in that house's decision to buy and put up those Christmas lights. And it's important to consider as well that these externalities occur in the production or the consumption process. So from those examples that I've just talked through, alcohol consumption is happening in the consumption process. So it's not the making of that alcohol that's causing those problems for the NHS. It's the people consuming and drinking it. But the pollution from the factories that's happening in the production process, because whatever output those factories are producing, um, that is what's causing the pollution and that's what's causing the harm. So that's happening in the production process. Beekeeping is happening in the production process. It's happening, the, those bees are being used to produce honey. And so the, the beneficial effects are being caused as a side effect from that production process. Whereas the Christmas lights is not the making of the Christmas lights that's giving that uh, additional uh, benefits to the people in the street. It's the fact that someone's bought them and someone's putting them up. So that's happening in the consumption process. So we're now really coming to the crux then of why these externalities actually result in market failure. And we can explain that by using a supply and demand diagram. So remember we said here in the supply and demand diagram that suppliers, the producers are only really interested in their private costs. They are not interested in those negative externalities because they're being imposed on third parties. So that factory that's producing output and causing pollution as a result of it is not interested in the effects and the impact of that pollution. It's not impact interested in any of those costs. It's only interested in the private costs, the cost of their labor, the cost of their land, etc. What we're showing in this diagram is that if they were to consider those full costs, we know that higher costs, the increase in producer costs, shift supply curve further to the left. So if they were to consider those full costs, those negative externalities, those external costs, as well as their private costs, then their supply curve would be further to the left. So you can think of this as kind of a hypothetical supply curve with the firm considering its full social costs rather than only considering its private costs. And so then what you get is a new equilibrium, which is where the market would be in a socially optimal world. So this is the equilibrium that the market provides us with. And this is the equilibrium in a socially optimal world with those firms considering the full social cost of their output. And that is the reason why the market's failing. It's failing because we end up with an inefficient allocation of resources because we have overproduction. If we go back to the diagram, this is the quantity of output that's produced in the market. 
this is the quantity of output that's produced in a socially optimal world. So too much output is being produced, more output than we would want is being produced. And that really is the definition of market failure. If there's an inefficient allocation of resources, if left to the market mechanism, so that output is higher than the socially optimal level. We would want it to be lower. And so we are therefore left with market failure. Now, a really common question is to say, OK, that's fine. Happy with why the negative externalities cause the market failure. They're negative. They're harmful. We end up with market failure. But what's the problem with the positive externalities? Positive externalities are beneficial. They're good things that are happening to third parties. And so why is the market failing as a result of positive externalities? But actually, the market failure still occurs with the positive externalities, just like it does with the negative externalities, because the market failure is the inefficient allocation of resources. And we can do a very similar analysis in the other direction to what we just did with the negative externalities. So if we go back to our supply and demand diagram here, we said that the demand curve was constructed with the consumers only considering the private benefits of their consumption decision. So that person deciding to buy and put up Christmas lights is only considering the benefits to them. They are not considering the positive externalities. They are not necessarily considering the wide ranging benefits it will have to all those third parties that will cheer up additionally on their street as well. If they were to consider those full and those additional positive externalities, those external benefits, then the demand curve should actually be further to the right and it should be higher for those Christmas lights. And so what we get is we have our market equilibrium, which is here, where the point where supply is equal to demand, and we have our socially optimal equilibrium, which in this case would actually be at a higher quantity of output if those consumers were to consider the full benefits, the full social benefit, and to consider all those positive externalities as well. So in this case, we again have an inefficient allocation of resources, but this time the problem is under production, under consumption. The output provided by the market is lower than the socially optimal level. This is the, uh, the market equilibrium, and this is the output that the market will leave us with. But if we were to live in a more socially optimal world where the market would provide perfectly efficient allocation of resources and we didn't have those externality effects, then we'd be producing our higher quantity of output. And this could be seen as our socially optimal output. And this would be seen as our socially optimal equilibrium level.